Welcome to a demonstration of the URL filtering of Netask Firewall. In this demonstration, we are going to see briefly how URL filter can help restrict the user access to websites. Starting with the configuration of the firewall, in the object database there is a list of the company users defined. This list can be created in an internal LDAP database or linked to an external LDAP or Active Directory database. For more efficient configuration, it is a good practice to configure URL rules based on user groups. Typically, users are grouped according to their access rights. In our example, we have two user groups, the normal users and the privileged access users. The second element of configuration must be the authentication portal. We must enable the authentication web portal and the authentication method in order to allow the users to authenticate themselves to the firewall. Typically, in a URL filtering scenario, the authentication portal must be enabled on the internal firewall interfaces. The most simple but also secure method for user authentication is SRP. It is a method where the user does not send his password in clear text over the network. It requires though that the Java runtime is installed at the user's browser. There are also available other methods less or more simple and or secure, like simple LDAP, Radius and Kerber server, SPNIGO, NTLM or certificate-based authentication. Next, there is the HTTP proxy that must be enabled. The proxy in a Netask firewall is an element that will redirect traffic on specific interfaces and ports to the appropriate module for content scanning. In the proxy tab, we can configure various other settings like enable antivirus scanning in web pages and downloaded files or create custom blog pages. Then there is the content filtering configuration. In the content filtering configuration we can configure various URL groups to use them in the URL filtering rules. In our example we have a group of sites called restricted sites. Restricted users will have access only to the sites contained in this group. Having created the needed groups allows the creation of the URL filtering rules. There is an area available of 10 slots. Each slot is a set of URL filtering rules. In our example, we have activated a slot containing three URL filtering rules. Rule 1 will allow privileged users to access any URL. Rule 2 will allow normal users to access only the restricted site's URLs. And rule number 3 will block all of the rest of the traffic that does not match the rules 2 and 1. Slot 1 is predefined in the firewall and contains rules for all the URL categories of the URL filtering module. This slot can be copied and or fine-tuned if we need to use the firewall's URL filtering updatable categories. Rules can be added or existing rules can be changed. Having our configuration ready, up and running, let's go and see what the user experiences. When a user tries to access a website, he is redirected to the firewall portal where he needs to authenticate. The user remains authenticated for a particular duration of time. If the duration ends, the user is prompted again for authentication. Once he is successfully authenticated, the URL filtering rules apply and the user is automatically redirected back to the initial requested site. If the user needs to log out before the authentication duration ends, 
he can go back to the firewall portal and log out. This way, he does not risk another user sitting in front of his computer and ac accessing the web using his own access restrictions. Now let's see what happens when a restricted user browses the web. Again, the user is requested for authentication. After authentication, his request is processed by the firewall normally. In this case though, he is not allowed to access the requested site, so the firewall redirects him to a block page. The same happens any time the user is trying to access an unauthorized page. He is able to access only the URLs allowed it by the URL filtering rule. And this completes our demonstration. Thank you very much.